like I said, I'm going to show how to do this lollipop. And then th there are two new kits. Stampin' Up! has their non-stamping kits. So that means they're less expensive and they're super fast, but you won't have like leftover stamps to play with. But we have this Rockstar Legend kit. And both kits make eight cards with two designs and you have four of each. So we have the Rock, oh, just called Rock Legend. And then we also have um, Panda Friends kit. And I believe that these are only $14 and they're super fast because you're not stamping. You really only need dimensionals and glue dots that come in the kit. So I'll show, I'll walk you through making those um, but first, let me just tell you about this little Valentine treat. I found an old Halloween version of this, which I didn't seem to bring with me. And I wanted a little treat to give out. Hey, Jean. Nice to see you. A little treat to give out to my piano students and my stampers at my retreat. And this is so fast and easy. So I have these tiger pops which are my son loves these they're like a swirl strawberry and cream swirl flavor and you could of course just write two from on the back but you can make it look even cuter so what you need I'm going to show you how to just cut one and then how to do multiples Laurie today we're making this little valentine treat and I'm showing two new card kits from Stampin' Up. That's what's on the agenda. Okay, so for this little lollipop cover, you need a piece of cardstock that's two inches by five and one eighth inches, and then a little tiny piece of DSP. I'll explain my weird measurement, one and three fourth plus a sixteenth. I'm using this um, most adored paper that is a free celebration item. You can get it free with a $50 order. And it comes in 12 by 12 and you would get two of each design. So these are double sided. That's one side, that's the other. One side, that's the other. They come in 12 by 12, but I'm working from a little sampler pack, which is what I give in my paper shares. Okay, so uh, the first time I did this swirly pattern, I'm going to try it. I thought this one would work. That one would be cute too. Um, and I happen to have these little two inch squares left from when I made this. So I just have to cut them down. I think I'll go with the, uh, the hearts. But again, you could use multiple different ones. Um, okay, so let's get this the right measurement. I say one and three fourths plus a sixteenth because that's easier than saying how many sixteenths is that really? I have to think about it. Yeah, four, eight, twelve. It's like thirteen sixteenths. But this is just for me to get the right little amount of edge I want around it. You could just do one and three fourths and have a bigger edge, but I just go to one and three fourths, then a little sixteenth over. That's just giving me a little smaller edge, which is what I wanted. And I'm trimming down a two inch piece I just already had. Okay, so that's gonna go on the front. And then we have this piece, I think I already cut it five and one eighth by two. And I'm gonna show you after we make one, how you could do multiples at a time, like cut, I think four at once with less cuts. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so your first mark is three eighths, and I think it's easier rather than coming here to do three eighths over here and then turn it. So I'm going to the three eighths mark, putting a score line. Now I'm going to turn that and go to two and three eighths. Score. Two and three fourths. Score. Let's hope this is right because I modified some measurements of my other one, and then four and three fourths, and score. Okay, so that's your little sleeve, which I'm going to fold on my lines. Did I bring a bone folder over here? Okay. 
apparently not. Okay, so that, so by the way, the way I ha currently have this, you could slide your lollipop, well, maybe not with a ribbon, in and out, <laughs> but um, I'll show you what I'm debating on doing. That would make that harder to do. You just rip it apart, but really it's fine to rip it apart. It's what most kids will do. I forgot that that ribbon's kind of holding it closed. Let me tighten that up. Okay, so now we're going to put our DSP on here. DSP is short for designer series paper, in case you hadn't heard that phrase before. Oops, got a hair. Now, I am about to use a retired product, but you, with my heart punch, but you could use dies instead. Did I bring this heart punch over here? Oh. Um, I just am doing this because it's fast and easy. I don't know, I've had this for a really long time. I don't know exactly what it was called, but it's the perfect little size. Now, of course, I can't see well, if this is even. We're just gonna hope for the best. Yeah, close enough. Okay, and that I don't need. I mean, you could use that for something else. And then we need to put a little hole in the bottom and you could, uh, the one eighth punch was a little bit tight for me to fit this. One fourth was a little big. Once again, I'm using an old heart punch, but they're not gonna really line up. It's not gonna matter because I have to close it like this to get my punch through there. So mine are just gonna overlap like so. And then you just slip your little um, stick through there and then it's cute because this particular oops except I want this on the front it's gonna look better this part overlapping instead of underneath where you see that edge I'm putting that behind that makes sense but anyway this lollipop already has a cute little white embossed design that makes it extra cute okay, peeking through that window now the one I, the Halloween one didn't have a hole, like it was just decorated cute. So you don't have to punch, you could just put something cute on the front. And then for the ribbon, I used originally this bubble bath, even though the color, this says this is flirty flamingo, I felt like it worked fine. This comes with a set of three colors, bubble bath, lemon lolly, and azure afternoon. But I was thinking if you wanted to add a little greeting, I did this, I embossed this with love from Country Bouquet, which is an older set, but still available. And my dilemma, first of all, my daughter liked it better plain, and that would be less work for me since I'm planning to mass produce these. But you could stick one there, and either with a dimensional or glue dot, if you attach it to this part, then that's gonna be a little tricky when they pull it out, but they can just rip it off. But if I did the black, then I thought this ribbon might be cute. So we'll try that on this one. We'll step this one up a little. And I'm just gonna use a mini glue dot right there. Not glue dot, a mini dimensional. My trash can go. and see if that will hold it steady so it doesn't have to attach to my sucker. It's kind of falling flat, but you could still, you could put one under there. Oh, too late, I already peeled the back off. Well, you could put one under there to hold it up, if, anyway. And then you could just tie a knot like I did the first time, which is what's gonna use the least amount of ribbon. Oh, I totally just frayed that, oops. Good thing I have a lot of that ribbon. Or you can give yourself a little more ribbon and we can tie a bow. So let's try it that way. So this will be the simple version and this is the stepped up version.
a little bit, a little bit fancier. But if you're giving these to kids, by all means, just go with that because they're they're gonna rip it open really fast just to get the lollipop. <laughs> they're not gonna admire all your hard work. <laughs> I've made these before for preschool class, so I know. Anyway, those are the quick and easy lollipop covers. And um, let me show you just how you can cut score for four at once. Okay, so instead of starting with two by five and one eighth, I have like this would be an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and I'm gonna cut it at five and one eighth. I don't think this is cut at five and one eighth, so. Let me do that first. I just grabbed this out of my bin. So five and one eighth. Oh, it's close. Okay, thanks, Laurie. So anyway, you have five and one eighth, and with that five and one eighth at the top still, you're gonna do these same score lines, but you're gonna go all the way down. So we'll do that three eighths first. I'm doing it on this side just because that's easier for me. And then turn and go to two and three eighths, two and three fourths, and four and three fourths. Then we'll turn it this way and cut our two inches all along. And this is how. Oh, looks like I need a new blade. This is very fuzzy. Oh my gosh. I would change it right now, but my blades are on a different level of my house. So you're going to just get the idea. And I will not actually use these because I don't like fuzzy edges. So anyway, that's how you can get four of those little sleeves at once. Interesting. How fuzzy that was all of a sudden. Okay, so that's that's the end of this little project. And now I will go, I will show just show you a couple of the new kits Stampin' Up! has out and how fast and easy they are to make. Okay, I didn't even look to see if these are still available before I got on, but I assume they are. Okay, so first we have the pandas, which I mean, how can you not think pandas are adorable? And they come with these envelopes that are already printed. So obviously these love you lots, that would work great for Valentine's Day or just any reason to send love. Hey there, you could turn that to anything on the inside. You could put happy birthday or whatever you want. And these are simple enough that really kids could easily do them. So on your kit, and how these are different than paper pumpkin kits, their kit collection is something where you can go in and look at what they have. If you go to stampinup.com, go to the menu, kits collection. They have card kits and other kits. And then in their card kits, they have some like this that have no stamping. And they're gonna be cheaper, like 12 to $14. I think this one's 14. Because you're not getting stamps, you're not getting ink, you're getting like pre-printed things. So, um, and they're also gonna usually be faster. And then they will have some kits that have stamps and ink included, and those are more like 20 to $24, I think. And, um, and then you have, once you make your projects, you still have the stamps and the ink you can continue to use. That's Kit's collection. Paper Pumpkin is like the kits that include stamps and ink, but they're a surprise. It's a subscription where every month you get a little box in the mail with a projects that are like kind of a surprise each month. And that's how that is. That's how they're different. Okay. All right. So first you should know either Paper Pumpkin or this, they have these codes on the back. Oh, my phone's being used to film. You can scan it and it will take you to YouTube where you can watch a quick video of them putting together the projects. I had a like, this is so small, I had a hard time getting my phone to zoom in on it and scan, but eventually I did. Okay, or do they tell you a website? They don't, but uh, I bet you could YouTube it. 
Okay, so then on the inside, it's kind of like Lego instructions. They tell you for card one, wow, you need these supplies. Card two, you need those. So that was my first step. Let's grab our supplies, okay? And this one comes with dimensionals and sequins, and that's all you need. Okay, so we have this layer. This comes out. I didn't use that for anything. And you have your greetings. Now, these are in a variety of languages. I'm English, so I'm going to look for the, the two English ones. Love you lots. And hey there. And I don't really need the rest of those. I can throw them away. They just gave a variety of languages, so this kit can work in all of the Stampin' Up! markets. So when I go to this one, I will only need that bottom row of four. The rest I won't need. Okay, so that's that. This is my card base. So this one, I need that, that, my little greeting, and then the panda, I need the one with the little heart antennas. And you can see this little guy has no arms. These are his arms holding the little love, let the little heart letter we're gonna attach. And then the other three bears, are going to go on the other card. So I'll just grab them now to finish off this sheet. Okay. And then I already took out that. So this card has a longer, this is like a skinny card, a skinny wide card. I don't know, there's a name for that and I can't remember what it is. I'll get one of each envelope. And then I just need, the last thing I need is this grassy piece that's gonna go along the bottom there. Okay, and then I have everything I need to make these two cards. And again, you get to make four of each design. And you'll see how fast they are. Okay, so we're gonna fold that. Let me clear some of my mess. Once you gather your pieces, they mostly just show you where to put your dimensionals on this one, because this kit's so simple. And you probably don't need to, you can probably look at, figure that out without looking at it. Since I've already made it, I will just quickly walk you through this, okay? So we put dimensionals on the back of this piece and these dimensionals come in your kit. Now I personally like the ones that you can purchase a little more because they're not quite as that thick. Oh, slimline, Laurie, thank you. I knew there was a name for it and I just could not think of what it was called. They are called slimline. You have, that's the full size, then there's also mini size. Okay, so you're gonna attach that with dimensionals and then I'm also going to put dimensionals behind this guy, but to try to make them only fall in the middle section so it's even. So I'll just stick a couple there. So this is if so if I had grandkids that wanted to craft with me, this is a kid I would do with them. I don't have grandkids yet. And my other kids are like they've kind of I have one daughter and she's away at college and my son's well, you know, to be honest, he maybe would like doing this, but I just haven't tried, okay? So there's that. Oh, I can see I lost one of my sequins. And of course, he needs his arms, or she needs her arms. Now, this is where I would probably use my minis, but you can cut the ones they've given in half to fit them in smaller places. And then there is a page of sequins that are honestly really hard to see. That might be something I would do different if you have your own embellishments. I might put like black dots or sequins. You could color these with um, your blender pens and make them black. Hmm, I should have tried that. I didn't think about it. This did have three and I've lost one. So 
They're a little hard to see the sequins, but there they are. So that's card one in the Panda Kit. And it comes with this adorable envelope. And then card two is the Slimline card. That's the envelope. That's what it looks like finished. And again, this one is just all dimensionals. So you'll put dimensionals behind this and all your bears. But when I do my bears, I'm gonna put them towards the top because the bottom's gonna land on the, the dimensional part. I mean, sorry, the part that's already lifted. So I'm just gonna do a couple dimensionals each at the top of my bears. But yeah, at first I was trying to avoid putting them at the top of this because I was thinking they might tuck under, but I felt like they looked better being on the grass. This, I thought I might need to slim cut in half, but it actually does fit there. And then the fun part, pulling all the backs off. Some people use their piercing tip of a take your pick tool to grab them. Do I have one here? We could try it. Oh, I don't have the right. Oh, there we go. We'll see if this works for me. I see people do this. I usually just peel them, but just for fun, let's try it. No, it didn't work for me. <laughs> okay, I've seen people like stab it in there and grab those off. Oh, but it didn't work. Now, when I did this the first time, I laid these guys out before I, and I turned one over at a time. I should have done that. I'm gonna use my little guide here so that I don't stick these too far apart or too close together. Okay. So I've already peeled the back off all of them. Okay, and then I missed this thing that says, hey there. And then we add our little sequins like that once again, I will say, are kind of hard to see. On the green, you can see it, but they really get blended into this polka dot background. So you could just leave those off and save these for something like, see on the black paper, they would show up more, but oh well. Okay, so there's kit number one, um, and it's called again, Panda Friends Kit. And super fast and easy projects. I'll leave one out, put the rest away. Okay, the next kit, is, and I actually made one of my cards not exactly right. I realized afterwards that I missed a piece, so I'll try to get it right this time. Next kit is Rock Legend. Now, I am a piano teacher. I've taught for many years, like 10 plus, and this used to be the cards I would need because my students were all so young. Now they're like teenagers, a lot of them, and so this is actually better for them now. I mean, yeah, it's not piano stuff, but that's okay. I don't generally, I, I have a piano stamp set, but I just give them what I have on hand. So this will be perfect. Okay, so we're gonna make, You could. this kit comes with enough to make four of each one. And I'm just gonna do one of each. This is the piece I left off. It's supposed to have this layer on top before I put everything else on, but I didn't do it. I, I mean, I missed that. Okay, so you got your sequins or your red embellishments, star embellishments, and your dimensionals. And this one comes with these little glue dots, but I tend to just use adhesive, but you can use those if you don't have it. Okay, so on this sheet, we'll need a guitar for one of them and drums for the other. And then that piece that I forgot to use the first time. This also comes with two different envelopes. One is black, one is red. So you could pick that. Maybe I'd do them, go them like that way, but you can do whatever you want. They're just, the front's plain, but the inside. 
And then I need my card base, one black. I don't know where my yellow ones went. I'm going to need this piece. Okay, and you'll need, there's some vellum pieces. One looks like a guitar pick, but is interestingly not on the guitar card. One is a star. And then the yellow. Okay. I'm going to just fold these, set out my pieces, not forget this one this time. Now you can see what you like better, if you like it without. We've got guitar, and of course you could change these around. I'm just doing them exactly as it said. You rock. So those are all a different language for me, so I'm only going to really need a couple things from this sheet. You're a legend. And then this little one up here says happy birthday. And the rest, I am gonna throw away. Cause I'm not gonna try to send them <laughs> to someone else. <laughs> Find someone that speaks that language. Even though my daughter at college actually lives in this thing called foreign language housing, where um, she could probably use all of those cause they have German house, Spanish house, Russian house, Chinese house. And like she lived in a Spanish house last year because she's learning Spanish and then this year German house because she knew German. Anyway, you only speak that language in your house and yeah, that's a random tangent. Okay, this is the card I forgot to put on the first time. So I'm actually gonna look at this picture to see how it's supposed to go. Just kind of lopsided the other direction. Hey, Kathy, good to see you. Oh, hopefully you saw my message that the paper share is ready. So whenever you want to get it. Okay, then this little pick. Now when you put adhesive on vellum, again, they've given you dots to attach all the flat stuff. And I'm just going the faster way. But vellum, adhesive shows through vellum, especially with a black background. So I'm trying to put my adhesive in places I know is gonna get hidden by like the guitar or that greeting. So I'm gonna put one up the top and one down there. And again, if you were using the dots that came in the kit, you would do it the same thing. You would just put those dots in places. Although the dots I don't think show up as bad, but see, you can see that that adhesive shows up quite strongly. And then just stick a couple of those dimensionals. Um, I have a little half one from earlier. Well. Although I think actually a full size one does fit up there, but goodness. If you cut it in half, you don't have to be as careful trying to fit it in there. So the nice thing is these, oh look, I have to adjust. Okay, that's gonna get covered, but I put my tape a little too far over. Hold on, I'm gonna just change this a little so I can make that go where I want it to go. And this will get covered by that. So I'm gonna put a dimensional up there and down there where it won't land on my guitar handle. My question for the day, by the way, inspired by this kit, I realize I didn't take adhesive off the back of that. Is, do you play a musical instrument? And if so, which one? And if not, what is one you would like to play or wish you played? Um, and when you answer my question of the day, I enter you in a drawing to win the projects I made today. So today there's kind of a lot of them. Then you just stick your little stars around um, I play piano, obviously. I already mentioned that. I actually have played guitar, and I have a guitar that I got from Russia, interestingly enough. 
I taught English in Russia when I was in college. So I bought a guitar there and I play it hardly ever. <laughs> I But I do know how to play and I just am really rusty and I only know a few chords, but I can play like around the campfire, which I don't go camping anymore. So that's why I haven't played it for a long time. Um, and I always did want to play drums. Oh, well, drums are like my favorite at any kind of concert or thing like that, but um, I don't play drums. And I, ukulele is very similar to the guitar. I should learn that, but there's a lot of things on my list to do. Okay, I learned the first time it's easier if you put these drumsticks down before this, because I was trying to slide under there and I got glue. This is again, something you could, well, just for fun, I'll show you. You can do these little dots. I think I would use my scissors to get them. They're just like, to me, so much easier just to run some tape if you have it. But if you don't, these are here for you. Stampin' Up gave them to you. Maybe it's easier not to use the scissors. Just peel them off. Let's see. You would like to play guitar, Laurie. Yeah. It's a nice soothing instrument. <laughs> Actually, Laurie, I think I did my wheel spin for my corner fold bird card, and I believe you won. I haven't posted it yet, but I have saved the spin on my phone. So I think you'll be getting that from last time. Okay, now I already put adhesive on this. Now see, the beauty of those dots versus tape is I can mess with this a little to see how I want to lay it out. There, I think I like it like that. And then this little happy birthday pops up. Now though, that is pretty small. So you can cut the ones they gave you in half or if you happen to have the mini ones, which I tend to, I like the big ones best, but I use minis when I need them. Then, oops, you can stick that there for ease. And then last, you just add the stars. Oh, Lara, you learned to play the recorder. That's right. They do that in our elementary schools out here. I I own one and I bought books and I don't play that either. <laughs> it's all I can do to keep up with piano, I guess, teaching it. Oh, so I don't really like how I laid that out. Anyway, that is the, what do they call this one? The Rock Legend Kit. And again, eight cards for 14 bucks, no stamping. And those are the cards from that kit. And then the other one we did today, also $14. And gosh, I hope I'm telling you guys correctly because that's my memory. I didn't go check. Are these adorable panda cards? Both are great, fast and easy cards you could do with kids or give kids the box. They could go at it. And then... um. Our other little project from today was these cute little lollipop sleeves. So thanks for joining. This is my host code this month. If you place an order, please use the host code. And if your order is over $50, you will get a clear block C from me for putting your stamps on. And you also this month can pick a free celebration item. And, um... I usually send the gifts at the beginning of the next month, just so you know. So thanks for coming. Oh, good, Kathy. Glad you like these. Go back and watch the beginning. The lollipop sleeves are super easy to do. Okay, take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.